conceptual Jay sounded better than Jay Prince. People talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everyone is off to a great start for this week. I hope that you closed out last week strong. Uh, but no, no matter where you're at right now, no matter where you're going through, no matter what you may be experiencing, uh, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight, you still have the capacity within you, whether you know it or not, to rise up and meet the challenges of life that you may be facing. Uh, there is no circumvention of the challenges and struggles and vicissitudes of life. It is about overcoming life's obstacles. It's about staying in the fight long enough to win, about getting out there and being willing to go the distance. And someone asked me last week, what do you do when you feel like quitting? When you feel like giving up, what do you do? And there are some people out there that will tell you that they've never come to this point. Uh, my response to that is keep living. Um, there are many times I came to a point and while I didn't quit, while quitting wasn't an option, trust me that I felt like quitting it just was not an option to me and that's one of the things that I'll tell you right off the bat you have to take quitting away from being an option or an alternative to you finishing what you've started in your life or you will quit life is going to throw curveballs at you and I want to share with you some points that I think can be very uh, encouraging and empower, empowering for some of those, some of you who may be going through a time in your life where you feel like giving up. I want to remind you that we are doing the 30-day challenge throughout the remainder of the year. If, if you haven't ever did it before, you definitely want to try it out. For those of you who did it at the beginning of the year, I'm inviting you guys back. I know I said it was a once in once you know a one-time option but i'm opening it back up whether you've done it before or not you can still do it reach out let's make that happen uh if you want to get involved in the 30-day challenge it is a great way uh for someone to ignite and get started on the changes that are necessary to do the things in life that you desire to do so i invite you for that uh, check out some of the other resources that are going to be in the description box of this post um, and find what you feel works for you and get started on the life that you need in order to change. Um, one of the first things that I'm going to tell you that you need to know who you are. Uh, one of the biggest or greatest forces that have that has driven me over the course of my life as I, have, as I have encountered many obstacles, many challenges, many difficult moments is simply being aware of who I am and not trying to fit in. Uh, it has been said that uh, I heard Les Brown say that um, everyone is born unique but most people die copies. Why? Because we live in a culture and a society where everyone is trying to be like everyone trying to fit in trying to be accepted trying to be approved the focus is on earning the approbation of the masses instead of living at the level of your design here's the problem with that that is the catalyst of being average that is the catalyst uh, of of mediocrity you have to have an understanding of who you are you need to know deep down inside your why and why you're here what your purpose is you need to be purpose driven and when you are purpose driven you are very very cognizant of 
why you're here and what you should be doing and you will understand that it's not for being accepted it's you're not here to be accepted you're not here to be approved by the masses you're not here to fit in you're here to stand out you're here to express your uniqueness in a way that changes the world around you and changes as much of the world as you possibly can through the living out of your uniqueness in a way that inspires and empowers others and gives them permission to be themselves that's the first thing you cannot truly live life at the level of your design if you're constantly trying to fit in and do what everyone else is doing that's not where your power lies that's not the force of your giftedness and I'm gonna get into that too the next thing is understanding how the storm works in your life I remember being 17 years old and coming in and it was common for my grandfather when I would come home from school for me the football or track practice and I would walk in the door um, he would be sitting on the porch and he had built a screen for it, so that was a door to get onto the porch and when I would walk in that door he would say sit down boy I'm gonna talk to you and almost every day there was some lesson he was teaching me and for whatever reason you know I wasn't the average kid so, oh my god he come with him it was like I want to sit down and hear it there were some generations between us it was my great grandfather and it was me and he was my father and everything else because he reared me and him him and my great grandmother and he said boy i've taught you a lot but if you listen to this lesson today i promise you that it's going to take you further than anything i've ever taught you and he said look you're only you're going to be in one of three places your entire life in this world you're either going to be going into the storm, you're going to be into in the storm, or you're going to be coming out of the storm. That's life. You're not going to get around it. You're not going to be able to uh, avoid it. You're going to either be going into a storm, in a storm, or coming out of a storm. That's not the issue. The issue is what do you do when you're in the storm? The first thing you're going to want to do is find somebody to blame for you being there. Don't waste your time. 95% of the time it's you. Some decision you made, somebody you let in your life, something you did that you should not have done. Don't beat yourself up over it. What you need to focus on is what are you going to do while you're in the storm. He said, let me tell you something. Son, what I'm about to tell you will change your life. If you get it, you won't have to chase greatness. It will overtake you. And he said, when you're in the storm, your only responsibility is to come out of that storm a better man than when you went in. In other words, what was he saying? He was saying, let the, storm, let the storm shape you. Let the storm strengthen you. Let the storm pull out of you uh, any type of fear or trepidation about life. Let the storm build in you character and integrity. Let the storm shape and mold courage within you. Let the storm be the force that drives you to the next level in your life. And that's something that I want you to really understand is that your storms are going to forge character. Your storms are going to forge fortitude. Your storm is going to forge courage. But you've got to understand that you don't circumvent these things. You don't get around these things. They are coming. It's what you are going to allow them to do. How are you going to approach them? Is that the thing that's going to matter next? You got to operate in your gifts. That like it's like three points I've got written here, and all of them are really focused in the gifts. I see a lot of people they're focused on their weaknesses. They want to strengthen their weakness. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be better in something you're not that good at. But you, um, uh, the Bible says that your gifts will make room for you. Your gifts will bring you before great men. And 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 this is what you got to focus. So many people are operating in skill sets that are not truly their gifts because it op it helps them operate in someone else's gift someone else's vision someone else and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with holding down a job while you operate and do what you need to do to take care of yourself but you must understand to fully live in who you are and what you were meant to be you're going to have to operate in your gift you're going to have to walk in your vision you're going to have to take on your purpose and what you, and what what that means is when you're operating in your gifting you're operating in your area of competence and there's something about operating in competence that builds self-esteem and builds self-confidence that allows you to stand up and square your shoulders and walk off into things without fear and trepidation you got to learn how to walk 
and operate in your gifting, in your strengths, in the things that you were designed and built to do. That's where you've got to find yourself. We tend to want to do, you know, we go to school and we learn these skills. Nothing wrong with gaining skills. Skills help you. You want to refine your gift, and a lot of times you can refine your gift by developing new skills. But the thing is, your gifting is inherent in you. It's built into your genetic and spiritual design. It's a part of who you are. You can't disqualify yourself from you can't shake it you can cover it and submerse it in, in in darkness of all the things you're doing around it but it's still there it may be lying dormant but it's still there what do you have to do you have to peel back the layers of darkness and uncover it you need to pull it out dust it off start to build and refine it because that's where your power lies that's where your act your, your access to exceptional, extraordinary, and phenomenal re resides. It resides in your gifting. You were given that. That's the uniqueness that separates you from everybody else because nobody's gift is exactly the same. You have a bunch of speakers, but each one's gift is a little different. You have a bunch of writers, but each one's gift's a little different. You have a bunch of healers, but each one's gift is a little different. Everybody is given this thing and it's given to be done a unique way. And it's the working of the uniqueness that allows you to have the power to touch lives, to change lives, to heal lives, to build lives, to be a part of something greater than yourself. That's where you find greatness. That where, that's where greatness overtakes you is in the course of serving others and doing for others and giving to others and building others. And I want to encourage you to focus on your gifting. And, 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 and then the next thing is try quick and fail fast. This is where I lose a lot of people. This is where people start to get fearful because they've heard failing is not an option. Uh, they've heard people say, uh, failure is not an option for me. And so they get the idea that successful people don't fail. Here's the truth of the matter. Successful people fail more than people who are not that successful. Why? Successful people try more. It's the thing. It's, it's like success is really about the law of pro probability. There's a probability or statistic in everything. Insurance companies set their insurance rates based on probabilities. The probability of being in a certain area, driving a certain car at a certain time frequently gives a certain probability of an accident. It doesn't mean that you'll have an accident. It means that there's a certain probability. There's a certain probability every time you leave home and, and, and go out and return that you'll get home safe, but there's also a certain probability, a lesser one, that you'll have an accident and maybe not even make it home. Uh, that's probability, but there's probabilities in life when it comes to living out your vision, living out your destiny. It's a probability that if you try something, you're going to fail. But here's the other probability. If you keep trying long enough, you're going to succeed. I don't care how bad you are at something. If you keep trying it over and over again, eventually you're going to hit. You're going to hit what you're aiming at. And, 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 it, and it's about probability. So what happens? You keep trying. You keep trying until you hit. It's about probability. Here's the thing, though. Say, for instance, you're talking about a dartboard. If you're throwing darts at a dartboard and you suck at darts, you probably miss the board a lot when you first start. But eventually, not only are the law of probability of just lucking up and hitting the board going to be in play, the thing is, the more you throw the dart, the better you get at it. The more you start to get the feel of it, the more you start to see how the dart flows, the more you get the sudden, sudden touches down. Next thing you know, you're hitting the board. Next thing you know, and eventually you're going to hit a bullseye. Whether it's luck or you've developed a skill to do it, the thing is you got to keep trying. And here's the thing, the quicker you get in something and try it, and, and, and new ideas, that's what success people do. A new idea comes, they try it. They don't sit on it. They don't procrastinate. Procrastinate, 
Procrastination is the thief of time. It robs you of your most precious asset, and that's time. You don't get time back. When it's gone, it's gone. If you spent it uh, good, if you didn't, you lost it. If you spent it right, you get something back later down the line in return for the time and energy and effort you put into that time. But you've got 86,400 seconds in a day. How you invest in that time is going to determine your destiny. So you've got to sit up and say, look, hey, I'm going after it because here's the thing when you get through life you're going to come to a point if you live a full life you're going to get to a point where you're going to have to give a reckoning of what you did with what the creator gave you you're going to have to sit down and come to a reckoning of what you did with your gifting did you give 100 percent you that's why you always hear me say I'm going to live life on full and die on E. Why? Because I'm not taking anything to the grave with me. I'm not taking any unused potential. I'm not going to allow fear of failure to rob me of the opportunity to do something great in this world. I'm not going to allow the fear of pain and discomfort to rob me of something that's so precious as to see the lives that I can touch. I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect husband. I'm not a perfect father. I'm not a perfect businessman. I've made mistakes in each area. But what I am is a person that wakes up every day with a quest to be better than I was the day before. And so when I wake up with that mindset, I'm pursuing something. I'm not concerned with what might happen or what may go wrong. I'm expecting life to happen because it happens whether I go after my vision or not. So why am I going to allow life to push me into a corner? and hold me hostage because of some fear about something that may or may not happen. What I've learned in my life is that I'm built for the battle. I'm built for whatever I face. I'm built for this. I can't stop everything from coming, but what I can do is I can face it head on and make up in my mind that as long as I'm breathing, I'm still in the fight. As long as I've got oxygen flowing through my veins i still have an opportunity to raise my level of existence to raise my level of a uh, 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 of force in this world to be a difference maker not because i'm perfect not because i've done everything right but because i have an intent to be a life changer don't allow fear to shut you down I believe it was Will Smith that I heard say that he believes God placed everything worth having on the other side of fear. I would actually add pain. God placed everything worth having on the other side of fear and pain. And the reason most people won't have it is they balk at the discomfort of fear and pain. It repels them. It pushes them back. It chases them into a corner of comfort, and then they become the, 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 the norm, the average, the mediocre. You've got to come out of that corner. You've got to stand up. You've got to push past the fear. You've got to push through the pain, and you've got to lay your sights on the thing that you were designed to do, because at some point in this life, you're going to have to give an account to the designer. And on that note, I'm going to get out of here. As I always say, I'm going to live my life on full. I'm going to take the failures, the falls, the bumps, and the bruises. But I'm going to down E. I challenge you to do the same thing. Don't forget to check that resource box and find out what fits you. Make a move today. On that note, I'm out of here. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. 
uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now, I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day. Talk Real about talk, I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements.